Um, now, Khuzaim, the next question would be to you. Um, and I think probably uh, since the time we have been talking, you seem to be a proponent of <laughs> blockchain, or at least you have a view on the use of blockchain for right. uh, the banks in general in Pakistan. Um, so what kind of thoughts you have, not just on blockchain, by the way, also on cloud and uh, technologies which are cloud-based in Pakistan, cloud-based out of Pakistan, the use of the clouds. So would you share your thoughts on these two major aspects, please? Absolutely, but uh, I will um, sort of focus more on the, a little bit on the legal side. You know, if, if data is going to be stored in the cloud, um, uh, you know, I think that, you know, we tradition these days uh, under our laws we have a concept of uh, whenever documents are removed from outside Pakistan, um, state bank permission is required. Um, so those you know so the entire framework for record keeping etc in cloud uh, needs to be formulated. I don't think that's very hard to do, but if there is you know if, if from a regulatory perspective that is considered something uh, that addresses the current risks. Uh, associated with not move, moving documents outside Pakistan. The blockchain is more interesting uh, to me because um, from what I understand, um, it, it's a way that provides the highest level of uh, accountability and it provides the same data to all participants. I'm not an expert in that, but if this blockchain concept, as I understand, is to work, it could completely, you know, revolutionize how, how digital banking works because, because, you know, end to end, uh, there would be absolutely no cash and it, the contracts for, let's say, loans would like self-execute. If that something can magically happen, that's for, for the technology side of it. But if, if indeed we can get there, um, i just like to highlight some of the legal issues uh, that one will have to uh, deal with. Um, so, for example, um, e U.S. only recently started passing legislation that um, legitimizes data on a distributed ledger. So, for example, it to be used as evidence in courts or, 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 or to give, you know, the, the authenticate documents. It does appear that uh, some form of legislation would be required and the electronic ordinance that we have would, wouldn't go that far. Um, the, the second is that, I um, mean, you know, you know, let's take an example of a loan. Um, so, you know, if something is going to happen in a blockchain from end to end, it originates. Uh, this, uh, you know, the CPs are satisfied. It's 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 um, you know uh, disbursed and then it's repaid. Um, so, it's, to work in a blockchain, you probably have to have some sort of sort, sort of a code or algorithm for it, um, and, and that has to work nicely. I mean. So we need some body or some authority to, to, to make sure those algorithms work. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not a technology expert, but you know, these are very, very important things. You can't just use blockchain. You have to create a complex algorithm for it. And that's why in previous panels have talked about mathematicians being involved. Um, also, there's this issue of security. Um, so if in a loan you want to create security, I mean, I mean you know, how does, will that work? Uh, there's, there's, a, there's a little bit of a problem there uh, in the context of creating security interests when it relates to immovable property or negotiable instruments. Because we do have our electronic um, transactions ordinance that, 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 that gives validity to electronic contracts, um, but it excludes um, you know, contracts relating to immovable property or, or, or negotiable instruments. Yeah. So under the present legislation, you, you probably could not create, a, you, know, could, you couldn't have digital banking uh, which involves security interests, um, you know, particularly if they involve immovable property or negotiable instruments. Oh. So one would have to look whether you want to, you know, you know, um, um, uh, fix that. Um, the other issue is, is you know, what we face is with respect to um, um, stamp duty. So, for example, under our electronic. Um, you know, ordinance, it says that there's no stamp duty for electronic contracts for two years or until you have a system in place to collect stamp duty. Now, that system is not in place today, and, and that system will have to be developed as to how you collect it electronically. But there is an immediate problem, which is that, um, at least in the province of Sindh, the stamp, the stamp authorities have amended the definition of instrument um, to include um, electronic contracts, emails, etc., 
and are saying that now we have a system to collect stamp duty, so pay stamp duty to electronic documents, and there is no possible way to do that. So either we, you know, work with the government of uh, with the government of Sindh to say that listen, you know, that's crazy, or we start implementing a system by which um, the stamp duty can be uh, can be collected. Um, but overall, the thing, the other issue is that, um, you know some body of case law has to develop on electronic contracts. Right now, the, uh, you know, even though the electronic ordinance is uh, 2002, the case law is more, uh, we've seen, basis of admissibility of documents and, and stuff like that. But um, we, we've not seen banks enter into loan and security agreements electronically. So there is, even though we believe that the, the electronic ordinance would cover it, we still don't have a body of case law uh, that would uh, give effect to loan and security creation electronically. And, 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 and I, I think for banks ultimately to get comfortable to, you know, do their lending work electronically, they will need, you know, some default on these contracts and some case law to give it a validity. And, and that will, you know, that will develop over time. But I think that is going to be uh, quite critical. I don't think any changes in law are required. The, the laws are... Um, uh, sufficient. And in so far as I do not also think there is serious amounts of legislation required. I think the state bank has enough powers to give it in my, yeah. the digital uh, banking um, in, a, in enabling um, setup. But if you're going to use blockchain, then we will need legislation. Thank you very Thank much, you. Uh, Hussain. I think probably you are absolutely right. When we review this electronic uh, fund act, you know, payment system electronic fund, fund act, and the way in which the state bank has put together this PSO PSP regulations, at least from a payments perspective and from an electronic fund identification perspective, we find it a lot flexible in terms of uh, in terms of state bank being able to put in additional guidelines and additional uh, you know uh, secure security control or you know additional uh, regulatory frameworks right. on their own right. rather than to resort to having an act or an ordinance in this regard but i think your point is extremely valid with respect to blockchain